Hi everyone, and welcome to today's video on, yes, discrete or random variables. Flying through this particular section and loving the work. It's nice and easy. So, so far, if you've seen my other two videos, we've done something on uh, listing all the probability language that you need. And the one prior to this was on conditional probability and independence. So, random variables. What is a random variable? Well, as we said previously, it's where you cannot predict the outcome. A variable, just something that's going to possibly change. And discrete, well, let's not rush things. As you can see behind me, there is the type of stuff we're going to cover today. The difference between a discrete random variable and a continuous random variable, and what a discrete probability distribution is. Now, in previous years, we've done all sorts of probabilities. And for some strange reason, and I cannot believe I'm about to say this out loud, because I do everything in my lesson to say spherical objects. But we're going to deal with balls in bags. Say no more. All right. We've drawn tree diagrams. We've done all sorts of stuff. So as I say here, we're now going to take it to the next level. What we're about to do now is scaffold later videos on the binomial uh, distribution. All right. So really, really important that you understand the, the basics here. So if not, watch the video. I don't know. I'll repeat. Maybe get my views up. Whole new discussion. But let's take a scenario that I've got 10 balls in a bag. Four are white and six are black. Now you're looking at that picture and you're going, well, hold on a moment, they're not. I couldn't find a picture of black and white balls. I want to choose three of them. So what are all my possible outcomes? Right, we'll try to do this in some sort of an order. Let's say we have white, 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 black, white, black, white, white, black, and black. And then we're going to go black, white, white, black, white, black, 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 white, and black, black, black. So there are eight different outcomes in total. Now, obviously, if I was to have four, there would be significantly more outcomes um, because you'd have white, 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 black, and we'd be here forever to do this. But knowing what is possible to come out is actually incredibly important for where we go forward, right? Um, as I say here, imagine if we were only interested in uh, how many of the balls were actually white. Well, in this situation, three are white. In this situation, two are white. Oh, we've got two white there and white, white, one white there. Two white, one white, one white, and no white. So that's really interesting because now I can sort of narrow down the information I'm looking for. And I could quantify the number of balls received that were white in the three that I drew. We, that actually is an example of a discrete random variable, the number of white balls taken out of a bag. All right, so because we want to call stuff like this in maths, we normally call it by the letter X. Now, it can change, it's totally up to you, but generally speaking, we describe a discrete random variable using the letter X. So you want to know what this discrete thing is, don't you? Well, a discrete is a whole number. I cannot take 3.2 white balls out of a bag. Well, I probably can if I cut one up, but I've got no interest in cutting it up. So anything that can only take whole number values, like the number of people, for example, is what we call discrete data. Obviously, the flip side of that is this one here that's called continuous data, which is effectively any real number. And by that, I mean any number that can have a decimal component to it. We normally use it for things like height, weight and time, right? Because all of those things can be measured to different levels of accuracy. And that small point comes in really, really handy later. But we're not going to rush ahead. We're not dealing with continuous random data until the next section. So let's deal with uh, the probabilities of discrete random variables, right? So a jar is containing four white and six black balls. What is the probability if four of those balls are drawn at random from the jar with replacements, again, that's really important. The, the balls are going to go back in. We're not going to change the inherent probabilities each time. What is the probability that a white ball will be drawn exactly once? All right, so it's going to come out four times. So we're going to have white, black, black, black. That's one of my ways. We're going to have black, white, black, black. We're going to have black, black, white, and black. And black, black, black black and white. So there are four different ways in which I can take one white ball or end up with one white ball out of that bag. So how am I going to now work out the probabilities of all this? Well, it says px equals 1. Now again, I'm going to make that a little bit more specific and say prx equals 1. Bearing in mind we have defined x as the number of white balls gained 
we are looking for that x value to be 1. So we'll find the probability that only one white ball is removed in those four experiments, or every time I take four out. So how do we do this? Well, the first thing I'm going to say is, well, the probability of getting a white out of my bag, well, there are four white, is 4 on 10. So I'm going to write that as 0 0.4, just because I'm going to do my calculator in a moment. The probability then of me getting a black would be 0 0.6. And because these are independent, and if you're not sure what I mean by independence, go back to the previous video, we can just multiply these probabilities together. So white is going to be, what did we say, 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.6. And this one's going to be 0 0.6 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.6. Now, you're beginning to see a bit of a pattern here, which is 0. Point, uh, black is 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6. And we may as well finish it off for completeness. 0 0.6 times 0.6 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.4. In fact, each of those are identical because with multiplication, 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. So what I actually end up with is that my probability that x is equal to 1 is equal to 0 0.6 cubed times 0 0.4. Now, where did that come from? Well, all I've done is taken one of these lines here, and I've gone 0 0.6 cubed, because there's three of them, times 0 0.4. And then, because we then have four different outcomes, I'm going to multiply that whole thing by 4. So, loading up my trusty calculator, 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 times 0 0.6 times 0.4 and then times by 4 gives me a probability of 0 0.345 and 6. Do you know what? I couldn't have actually done that any better if I tried. Did you see it? Look, 0 0.3456. Complete fluke! 3456! I want to dance. No, I don't. Moving on. But you see what happened there? The point of this was to find those individual probabilities. I had to find out each of those individual events and then multiply it by how many different ways there were of coming out the back. Now, now probability tables are, are awesome when we put all this information together. When we're dealing with discrete random variables, okay, the table uh, and the information you have is called a probability distribution. Please, please, please remember that. And we can express each of those individual probabilities in a table. And so first things first to notice is this top row here has the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Why? Well, because we are looking at taking and counting how many white balls are possible when I select four from a bag, or how many different ways I can get a white ball or white balls out of a bag when I take four out. And so the first thing is there's no white balls at all, in which case they are all black. Then there's the possibility of getting one white ball. We've just worked that out. Two white balls, three white balls, or in fact, all four white balls. And we can work out those individual probabilities, which is what this means here. It says, what is the probability that a white ball drawn is given by the count above? All right. So in this situation here, we've already worked out the probability of getting one white ball uh, from the previous question. We said it was 0 0.3456. 6. 0 0.3456. How would I work out the rest of that information? Well, in pretty much the same way. So if I want to find out the probability of getting no white balls, well, how many ways are there getting no white balls? Well, it would have to be black, 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 and black. Well, the probability of getting a black ball was 0 0.6. In this situation, we'll raise it to the power of 4. So clear this. Put 0 0.6 uh, to the power of 4 gives me 0. 1, 2, 9, 6. That's a 9. Now you're probably wondering why am I using such a NAF calculator? Well, unfortunately, my Casio Classpad uh, online calculator isn't working, and so I'm waiting for it to be fixed. How would I find out this value here? Well, I want four whites. So that's me saying oh, white, 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 and white. Well, the probability to get me a white is 0 0.4 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.4, which gives me 0 0.4 to the power of 4. So bringing back my trusty calculator, 0.4 to the power of 4 gives me 0 0.0256, 0 0.0256, and then 2 and 3. Now, I'm not going to do the 2 and 3. I'll leave that as an exercise to you. But here's a question. What do you reckon all of those values there are going to add up to make? Well, hopefully, you'll come back with the answer of 1. Why? Because that, that table 
is all of the outcomes, all the possible ways of getting um, a white ball in four choices. And as I say here behind me, the thing to note about discrete probability functions is this. For any discrete probability function, we know that the values must fall between 0 and 1. So for example, what I'm trying to say here is that value there must fall between 0 and 1. It can't be negative. How can you have a negative probability? And please be careful, I've seen questions in VCAR exams over here in Australia that actually put negatives in there and try and trick you. And the sum of all probabilities in that table will always be 1. Again, if they give you a question and those values do not add up, it is not a probability function. One of the key things is being able to read a probability table and know what it's actually telling you and more importantly extracting probabilities from it. So for example, assuming we had some sort of discrete random variable that had uh, four choices, right? We're obviously selecting four things out of let's say a bag again. The obvious choices of being able to get that are no choices, one choice, two choice, three choices and four choices, all right? Or they can be all of them. Now. Because, as I just said a moment ago, we need to make sure that all of these values on the bottom add up to 1. So 1, 2, 3, 6, 9, 10. Good. They all add up to 1, so it is a probability density function or a probability uh, yeah, density function. What is this here, this PRX is less than or equal to 2? What it's saying is find the probability of getting x equals 0 plus x equals 1 plus uh, x equals 2. It's saying find the probabilities of getting 0, 1 and 2. Now the way I know it's 2 because it's less than or equal to 2 and be very careful with binomial data when we come up to it to make sure that you don't fall foul of that less than or equal to sign. So it's saying add all the probabilities for all of your x's being 0, 1 and 2. So I'm going to add 0, 1 and 2 together. So my probability of getting less than or equal to 2 white balls out of a choice of 4 is equal to 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3, which just so happens to be 0 0.6. Much more coming on reading of tables, but this is just a headline. And what does this business mean? It's PRX is greater than 3. Right, conditional probability. We've just done a video on that. So probability of X is greater than or equal to 3. Oops, don't close the bracket down. Is given that X is greater than 2. First thing I'm going to do is write out x is greater than or equal to 3 and x is greater than 2 divided by the probability that x is greater than 2. Now, this thing here is trying to trick us. The probability that x is greater than or equal to 3 and x is greater than 2. Well, for x to be greater than or equal to 3, it's already got to be greater than 2. So this is actually a bit of a trick. It's just as simple as x is greater than or equal to 3. So knowing that, what do we do? Greater than or equal to 3, add those two values together, which just happens to be 0 0.4. And x is greater than, ah, oh, now, x is greater than 2. Interesting. Now, when it's greater than 2, it can't include 2. So what does that mean? Well, it's got to be greater than or equal to 3, which just so happens that we've already got that value as 0 0.4. And so my answer is 1. Now, that was a fluke. It was literally a fluke. But if it did do anything, it proved that we need to watch those signs. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was a brief introduction to a discrete random variable. All right, discrete whole number values. Being able to work out those probabilities, putting them into a table, making sure that those values never are negative, and that when you add them all together gives one, is probably the most critical take home from this lesson. Well, I'm done. Thanks very much for watching. Now, if you haven't already, why don't you subscribe? Tell all your friends. I'd love to get more and more people to watch these videos. And if you're not interested, that's okay. Don't worry about it. There's another video coming up for you to watch as well. It's been really, really good seeing you. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.